Hey friends, I'm back! We took a break and went to the crater in Quebec. During this trip, one of the brewing experiences inspired me to make this video. Full disclosure, I personally don't do cold brew much. I've tried cold brew tea many times uh, with different teas in different occasions, but uh, I'm just not a fan of this brewing method. Now is this hot summer time, it's just natural that we want something that's chill and refreshing and a bit cooler than the traditional Gong Fu brewing. The crater we went to is called a Manicouagan Reservoir. It's quite remote and we were in extreme energy saving mode. Water, gas, electricity, we tried to use at least as possible. One night, we were having our evening stable, uh, our Shu Puar coin. We brewed it with the water we boiled earlier in the day. The water temperature is around 50, 60, a little bit more than just warm, but definitely I wouldn't call that hot. We had several infusions, uh, and the last infusion, we actually brewed it for over 10 minutes and we were really sure that this tea was done. And we checked on the time, and it was too early to call it a night, and a bit too late to start a fresh new tea. If you drink evening tea often, you would know exactly what I'm saying. So we decided to be a little bit cheap and push the tea a bit more. So we boiled a fresh kettle of water and brewed the tea. The result was surprising. It was like its second and third brew, and we only brewed the tea for about 30 seconds. I was really shocked at how much life left in that tea. I wasn't that close to throw it out. This story kind of explained why I'm not so keen on cold brew. Most of the time, it really doesn't pull out the full strength of the tea. However, cold brew has its own merits. It's great for scented or flavored teas, or some teas that you find is a bit too bitter or too astringent to brew with a higher water temperature. If you're someone like me, who not only enjoys and loves flavors, but also demands the full texture and mouthfeel of a tea, here's what I often do. Of course, the most obvious way to do it is to brew your tea normally and let it cool to room temperature. But if you are in a pinch for time, this is my favorite way to do it. Put the normal amount of tea leaves in your favorite brewing vessel. Add boiling water to it, about one-fifth of the total volume. Wait around five minutes, depends on the tea or the leaf amount you added. Some you might want to wait longer, some shorter. Feel free to play around with it. It's your own tea, don't be afraid. When you notice the tea liquor become undesirably dark, or say strong, fill it up with cold water. Here you go, a cup of tea ready to drink at a comfy temperature. If you like it to be chilled, feel free to put that in the fridge for a couple of hours, or replace some of the water with ice. I don't have ice cubes at home, so just imagine this. I know some of you get to know tea because it's health benefits, so here are two friendly reminders for you. First, I've heard people say, or some articles say, that cold brew is healthier than traditional hot brew. It is wrong. Many studies show that the concentration level of antioxidants in tea is positively related to the water temperature. Higher water temperature help pull them out from the leaves, for example, catechin. So one vote for hot tea. Uh, cold brew still has it, just a little bit less. However, it does pull less caffeine out of the tea. So if you are caffeine sensitive, cold brew is a great way. Remember in the other video I mentioned that we seem to reverse Phil's caffeine sensitivity. The other day, we actually did an experiment. So he had an espresso at 5 p.m. And later on, we also had a green tea uh, around 7. And he still went to sleep without much issue. Old times, we couldn't imagine this. He couldn't have even decaf if it's in the evening. So if we notice we become more sensitive to caffeine, then 
all times. Reduce the intake of caffeine is definitely a way to handle it, but there are other ways as well. Another concern is vitamin C. Oftentimes people talk about high temperature destroys vitamin C. Um, that's another myth. The compounds in tea or all kinds of food is very complex. So they have many relationships with each other. So it's not a pure form of vitamin C. And vitamin C is not as fragile as we think. It's kind of similar to lemonade that people say you gotta lower the temperature for the vitamin C in it. Both are myth. So my stand on this is not cold brew or hot brew. It's not which one is more healthy than the other one. Just choose whatever works for you and if possible, mix it up. Enjoy the benefits of both. Another reminder is that when we're hot and sweaty, it is not recommended to take out the tea out of the fridge and drink it all up. This huge temperature difference is shocking to our digestive system, causing micro blood clots and other hormonal reactions that are not desired for us. So if possible, let it warm up a little bit and uh, sip it slowly. I know it requires a lot of a discipline. I hope this video is helpful. Do you have any alternative way to brew tea in the summer? Any tips or hacks in terms of cold brew? Please share with us by commenting below. We'd love to know. Until next time, keep steeping.